and welcome to another episode of Seed Speaks. My name is Alex Martin, and today I'm absolutely thrilled to be your host. Um, as you know, we've been looking at soft skills that can help prepare you and your business for anything thrown at you. But today we have a very special Seed Speaks. Um, as some of you might know, next week from June 25th to the 29th is the American Seed Trade Association's Leadership Summit. So to help us prepare, we're tackling an important question. Why is it important for businesses to invest in young leaders? To help us learn more, we have three fantastic panelists straight from ASA itself. So um, I am happy to bring you today uh, Brad May, who is Vice President of Global Strategic Marketing Seed Treatments at BASF, current chair of ASTA as well, Jim Schwagert, who is President of Grow Alliance and the upcoming chair of ASTA, and finally Jake Ware, who is Business Manager at HM Klaus and current chair of ASTA's lead committee. So I wanted to thank all three of you for joining me today. I like to start with some brief introductions when we do Seed Speaks. So um, let's go ahead and start by learning a little bit more about yourself before we dive in. So Brad, I'll let you start today if you wouldn't mind introducing yourself and um, I guess a little bit about BASF and ASTA. Sure, thank you. Um, First, I'd like to thank you, Alex, for uh, inviting us to be on this uh, great format for this panel. I mean, it's uh, it's 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 a great way to discuss leadership and that ability to uh, talk about our Ask the Leadership Summit. So thanks again. It's really great. And again, I'm uh, Brad May. As uh, Alex said, I'm the vice president of uh, strategic global marketing for seed treatment at BSF and the chair of uh, this year for ASTA. Um, a little bit of my background, I've got about uh, 39 years in the industry and 25 years of it is in seed and in seed treatment, so the last 25 years anyway. My degree is in agribusiness and I've spent you know, the, the bulk of my career in um, sales and marketing and leadership roles in sales and marketing. So just uh, really excited again to uh, get to discuss this topic. Awesome. Thanks so much, Brad. And Jim, you were on here a couple of weeks ago, so you might be a familiar face to some of our viewers, but we'd love if you'd introduce yourself again as well. Sure. Thanks, Alex. Thanks for having, having me back. I'm Jim Schweigert, president of Grow Alliance. We're a seed supply chain solutions company. Uh, everything from custom breeding to final delivery of packaged seed to farmers on behalf of our clients. Uh, contract service business, so everything we do is on a contract basis for seed companies in the U.S. and around the world. Uh, we have five locations in the U.S. and one just south of Santiago in Chile. Uh, and so, um, yeah, we get to really see the entire industry from beginning to end. And I uh, really think this is an incredible topic uh, to be talking about for the industry. Thanks so much, Jim. And finally, Jake, we'll, we'd love to hear a little bit about yourself, H.M. Klaus, and I guess the lead committee as well. Sure, absolutely. So I'm a business manager at H.M. Klaus. I, uh, I manage a small team throughout the USA and Canada for, the, uh, for our direct sales, uh, our processing business. I'm remote based in uh, Grand Rapids, Michigan. I studied economics um, some time ago and uh, at Michigan State University. And uh, as you mentioned, I am uh, chair of the LEAD committee. So LEAD stands for Leadership Education and Development. And uh, we provide leadership training, um, uh, specific education and development uh, for all the ASTA members. So really, we start at students. We work through um, middle management, readers, all the way up to C-suite. And uh, we just have different types of uh, programs and uh, um, speakers that we bring um, to these uh, conferences. So, uh, personally, I started working in agriculture uh, about 10 years ago, um, but I did. I grew up with grandparents on both sides of my family being farmers, uh, one of them focusing on strawberries and cucumbers and the other on uh, apple and cherry orchards in northern Michigan. Um, I have a wife and three wonderful kids, and when I'm not working, I enjoy sailing with my family in the, in the summer here and uh, winter sports as well. So, and a big thank you to, do, to you, Alex. I definitely agree with Jim. This is a very important topic. Thank you so much to all three of you. Let's go ahead and dive into some, some questions. That's why we're here today. 
So Brad, you have been the fearless leader behind ASTA for the last year. Can you tell us a little bit about this conference, a little bit more about it and why you're getting excited for it next week? Yeah, I really like that word fearless. So yeah, uh, <laughs> um, I, I think uh, there is nothing more exciting than what we've been working so hard to change how we're work looking at this summer conference. We've always called it the summer conference. We call it the policy and leadership conference. We called it a lot of things. But as Jim uh, Schweiger, who is, this, who is the incoming chair, and Dave Armstrong, who's the second chair, we sat down and we talked a lot about what we really want to get done. As we're starting to bring, this, this conference is where we bring everybody in, all the different seeds. It's not just different crops, but all seed groups come in. And we thought it would be just such a great opportunity to really change it and and make a commitment for the next three years or more on making a leadership summit I call it the ask the leadership summit so we're still gonna have some policy things but it is something that would really really charged us up that we said you know what let's do it let's put everything we got into it and let's go after it one of the things that's really exciting about what we're going to be doing is I, i'll just kind of walk through the agenda a little bit is we have a great speaker in the general session when we start. Uh, it's Cheryl Connolly. She's the in futurist for um, Ford Motor Company. And I mean, she's really about developing a futuristic mindset. And if a leader doesn't have a futuristic mindset, I don't really understand how they're going to motivate vision and direction without that futuristic mindset. And she has won many awards. She's a great speaker. I think I just really look forward to um, working or hearing her and then afterwards working through with some of the groups on on how we can use that message in our le and learning and our leadership skills we're also got a, a luncheon for women on cultivating our leadership skills which uh, is being uh, held with um heather uh Lo Lowy, i believe is how you say her name she's a cult coaching consultant and i understand she's just one of the one of a great speakers so that should be a great workshop as well great luncheon as well um we're gonna have the horizon series which is where um we're gonna talk about leading through um, the transition this technology transformation uh how we can lead through sustainability uh, how we can uh, lead with these uh, volatile global markets. I mean, there's, that's changing every day. And we're even going to have a session on political forecast. Now, I'm not sure we can actually forecast accurately, uh, but I think we'll do our best we can. And then lastly, um, I'd like to just mention that we are going to have a, an awards reception. Uh, typically, we've always had a great awards reception where we've really traditionally talked about uh, having our real distinguished mem uh, distinguished award, ASCA award, and honorary lifetime member awards, which they are just so important to us. Uh, but we're also adding some other leadership things so that we can show all these leaders some true examples of leadership in our industry. Perfect. Thank you so much, Brad. And Brad, you you kind of led in well to to Jake's question that I have next as well, which Jake, you know, um, Brad already mentioned there there has been a switch from focusing on uh, last year. This was the policy and leadership development conference to this year. It will be the the leadership summit. Why do you think it is important to focus specifically on this leadership development as uh, yourself as the lead chair. Yeah, thank you, Alex. Um, and as Brad mentioned, uh, this conference is not moving away from policy. It's really just enhancing leadership. And, um, you know, it, it, uh, in my humble opinion, it's, it's, it's really because we see leadership as a catalyst um, to all of our goals, um, of course, including policy. And, and what I mean by that is, you know, when, when we can help build great leaders within our industry, um, we're also going to be creating um, great stewards, uh, great policy, and also assuring that uh, um, this place continues to, this industry continues to be a very desirable place to work. We all know that uh, um, it, uh, we've, we've seen multiple times that people work for people they like and um, when you have and build great leaders, you're um, really in the best place to be able to find, you know, some of the best people. And we believe wholeheartedly that uh, um, this industry 
is, you know, one of the most important industries um, in regards to, you know, feeding this planet, uh, amongst other things. So um, when you're able to build uh, leaders with purpose, um, they can uh, um, bring success not only to to each of the companies, but as to the industry as a whole. Um, yeah. Thanks so much, uh, Jake. Jim, now I, I know you're not new to leadership at all, and I've read your columns so much. I know you talk all the time about how to encourage employees to kind of join and participate in leadership roles, whether it's in your business or in different organizations. But why do you think it's important to encourage our, our employees to become active in some form of leadership? Again, be it at a conference or at an association level or at a business level. Well, I think I think it's important because we're at a moment in time for the industry and seed industry and ag in general where you, we, that generational transition we've been talking about is actually happening. And a, a quick stat um, from 07 to 2019, every asked to chair was born in either the 1950s or 1960s with two born in the 1940s. Uh, John Latham, who is chair in 20 to 21, he was born in the 70s. And I'll be the first chair uh, elected that was born in the 1980s. So you really have a, uh, you know, a changing of a generation of when, when people grew up, the life experiences that they've had. And you're seeing that kind of reflected in the market in general, new entrants into the business, people who think about seed and agriculture way differently than kind of the traditional um, companies that have, that, that have led with technology in the past. And it, it's at this moment that companies need to be able to decide where they go in the future. What is their path to long-term success for their next generation? And it's it's certainly not going to be by running the same plays they ran before. They, they need a new playbook. They need new ideas. They need new strategies. And the only way you can execute those as a company is to have committed leadership within your organization that can think about the new models, think about the new opportunities, brainstorm what the future could look like. And the more people you have in your organization that have that view, that understand where your company is today, where they can go in the future, how to get there, how to communicate it internally and externally, those are the companies that have the best chance to succeed. And I truly believe that the defining characteristic from now into the future of which companies succeed, which companies stay still, which companies, you know, maybe fade into a different kind of a transition is going to be based on how that leadership is prepared, how they're united, how they're trained, um, and then how they execute. And so that, that's why I think it's so important that companies invest in leadership, not just at the top level, but throughout the entire business. Perfect. Thanks so much, Jim. Um, Brad, you've kind of already mentioned this conference brings together, the, the summer conference always brings together people from across the seed industry, be it vegetable seeds, row crop seeds, what, what have you. Um, and I know this conference is really helpful to plenty of leaders. Jake already said we, we work to cater uh, from leaders who are just starting their careers to C-suite leaders. But um, I know I, it strives to focus on helping out maybe younger leaders who need or want to improve their skills. How do you see different seed companies helping young leaders develop their skills? And I know you're at quite a large company yourself. So what are you seeing in terms of leadership development? Yeah, I, thanks, Alex. I think one of the things is I'm not actually... I don't actually see it different for companies. What I do see is that companies really need to understand what their young leaders need. They need to listen and understand what they're needing and help them improve on their particular skills. Um, you know, such as the, the need to teach strategic thinking or how to embrace change or becoming uh, problem solvers. You know, you, if every company, large or small, has uh, different needs and and the, the lead the young leaders have different skill sets and need to enhance them and I think we need to uh, we need to improve upon them um, especially you know because when I look at it young leaders sometimes are could be a manager could be a project leader could be a single contributor of a company of a major company um, but 
they all have to develop the skills for communicating their vision of their company, you know, cause that's so necessary. If they, if they, a company has a vision, they need to believe in it and they also need to communicate it and need to be able to motivate people uh, to follow that vision. I mean, that's, that's really where leadership lies. Um, and in the end, I think the young leaders, um, they, they, I think, we need to we need to make sure they have a very deep understanding of our industry because this will ultimately make them better uh, leaders within their companies. So I guess that's uh, that would be the summary I would have on how we want to how, how how we would look at our young leaders, not really by companies, but by their individual needs. No, thank you so much, Brad. I think that's a good point to to talk about that. It really comes down to just fostering individuals. Um, I do have a question in from the audience. I think it kind of ties in really well, Brad, to what you were actually talking about. It's from Ashley Robinson. And she wants to know, how are we doing at overall supporting people to become leaders in the seed industry? Jim, you kind of mentioned we're in a transitional period between generations. So I just wanted to see if any of y'all had any thoughts on that question. Um, and I'll leave it up to you, whoever would like to take a stab at it first. I can, uh, just with the lead committee, I can take that one, Alex, um, if it's all right. It, uh, I, I think, you know, within, within ASTA specifically, you know, we've been doing some excellent things, you know, for students, whether it be scholarships, uh, mentorships, we sponsor students to come to these shows. Um, we will, you know, bring them to these shows and help them network and try to pair them up with people. Um, that are passionate about the industry and, you know, help them, you know, get introduced and try to begin to understand. Because a lot of times coming out of university, it's you've studied, you know, a specific, you've had a specific focus and really um, these programs help students begin to understand the industry a bit more holistically. And once they can do that, it not only makes them better at whatever they're going to, to be doing um, and, and help them with their career development, um, but I think it helps them enjoy what they're doing and see the true meaning behind it as well. So that's, that's how I would answer the question. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Jake. Uh, Jim, you look like you got something to say. Yeah. One thing I would add to that is just the, you know, the, the inflationary pressure right now on travel, hotels, uh, airlines, gas, all that kind of stuff is, it's probably got some people thinking about budgets and what can I really invest to send somebody to to a meeting. Um, you know, if you think about it in the other context of what's the improvement that they need to make or be able to make in the company to to justify that, I think the ROI looks really good. Now, if you can imagine a manager that might be in charge of, you know, five to ten employees, if they can get one or two percent more productivity out of those existing employees, if they can get you know, a couple percent better at retaining current employees uh, by being a better leader or increasing sales by one or two percent. I mean, really, you start looking at if you, you can send them to like a leadership summit or another leadership activity and they make those kind of improvements today, those are real dollars. And that that's, a, I think, a different way of looking how to offset those costs. And we talk a lot about investing in capital and people understand the need to invest in equipment and buildings and infrastructure. Um, but I wrote an article uh, maybe a couple months ago. It said, you know, investing in your employees never depreciates because it's true. If you invest in your employee base and they get better, they'll make the people around them better. That improves your overall company performance. And pretty soon you've got ideas being generated from, you know, every room in the building and it's all impacting the bottom line your, you know, farmer customers or seed company customers are having better experiences. And all that really starts with investing in that talent so that they can get better and, and they can improve. So the costs are definitely higher. And, you know, we all recognize that and it's something to be cognizant of. But if you put it in context of what's the small improvement they need to make to, to justify that expense, I think you'll find that the investment is really worth it. Thank you so much, Jim. Um, Moving on, Jake, I apologize. I have another question for you uh, after you just answered one too. Um, but when it comes to leadership development, what would you say is the the most important part for young leaders as they work to build up their build up and better their own personal leadership skills? 
Yeah, I think for for young leaders specifically, um, you know, one thing is probably the most important, I would say, is to be humble. Um, just just you know, if, if you're humble and hungry and just trying to, to, to gobble things, you know, gobble up as much information as possible um, and, and without judgment and, and without um, hesitation to ask questions. And, um, you know, it's uh, I, I would also say, you know, if because I mean, you're, you're constantly pondering things, you might be struggling with certain things. There are many, many leaders out there and probably many leaders that these young people admire um, and asking them a question or asking people for advice is extremely complimentary. And it's something that um, it's, I think there's more often than not, you know, you're going to get somebody that, uh, you know, wants to, you know, sit you down and help you with the, these things because good leaders tend to want to do that and develop people. And it's this, uh, this wonderful, um, 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 piece to good leadership that you get to bring up um, these, these, these other, um, you know, young people that are, will be the future leaders. Perfect. Thanks so much, Jake. And Jim, again, I, I have another question for you, even though you just answered one as well. But how do you encourage leadership? Like what happens if theoretically you, you, know, you see someone in your organization that might fit the bill of a leadership role, but kind of needs a push to uh, see it in themselves? Yeah, that's a good question. And, you know, sometimes it, you know, employee might be hesitant to request to go to a, a leadership summit or a conference like that because they think, well, it's, uh, you know, my boss thinks I'm just going to go for fun and uh, I'm not going to learn anything. The, the thing that I think is important is to set up expectations going in and then have a follow up when they get back. So your debriefing about the experience, what did they learn? Who did they talk to? Um, you know, when our folks go to meetings like this, Yes, we're definitely networking within the industry. Uh, you know, that's where we operate and building new relationships is important there. But I, I always want to encourage them to talk to somebody from a crop. We don't do anything with today at all because you learn how somebody else thinks about the industry and how they think about their business and their place in it. And those are really valuable conversations. Um, I think, you know, Jake's point is, is well taken is if you want to be a better leader, sometimes you have to approach it as just complete learning and in the investment in the knowledge versus trying to build a relationship for a specific business goal. And that can sometimes be a conflict when a supervisor says, well, you know, what leads did you generate? How many customers did you visit? Did we get any, any business from this one interaction you had at that meeting? The answer might be no, but long-term that's probably more beneficial to that employee. Uh, so I think it's, it's, it's setting out the goals, expectations, uh, making sure they understand the purpose, why they're going, and then have a follow-up when they get back. So they know they have to tell somebody about the experience, which allows them to be a lot more engaged. Perfect. Thank you so much. I think we have enough time. I'm looking at the clock. We have about six minutes left, but I think we have enough time to, if not hit both of these questions, at least one of them. So uh, my next two questions are actually for all of you. Um, and we can start with Brad and go down the line like we have been, but what would be your best advice for an aspiring leader of the seed industry? What should they know as they start working towards their kind of leadership goals themselves? Yeah, I think um, if I was giving advice, I would say engagement, but engagement with commitment. It's really important that they commit. Um, you know, like Jim said, if you're coming to the leadership summit, commit to it, be engaged uh, fully. Uh, immerse yourself into the trainings, um, you know, uh, have a passion for your job, I think is always important. Using mentors is extremely important, uh, as uh, especially if you know somebody in the area that you're most interested. Um, and and of, of course, Jake mentioned that in the, in the lead group that we do do that. Um, another thing is learn to be a really strong communicator. Um, we have a lot of communication things that we can do with the, with all of social media and so forth, but good, strong communicator is going to be important, uh, uh, as far as an aspect of becoming a great leader. And then some of the other side things are like making sure you have good strategic awareness and also be able to, you know, be able to foreseeable 
problems that may occur. Those type of things are really important for good leaders. Uh, you can keep going on, but then I uh, would Jake and Jim probably wouldn't have much to talk to, so I'll, I'll stop there. <laughs> Perfect. Thanks so much, Brad. Uh, Jake or Jim, I'd love for you to, to share some of your advice as well, whoever would like to go next. Um, well, one of the things that I, I do and I, you know, it, it's, it's free is to just have, uh, you know, podcasts or, or, you know, audiobooks or something that you can listen to while you're driving or while you're going for a run or working out or something like that. Um, you know, so there's a lot of time that people have that if you, 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 you know, you do something that's inexpensive, like just listen to these books on leadership or find a topic that you're really interested in. Like for me, it's history and you, you learn about, you know, military leaders or world leaders or um, leaders of other businesses and what did they do right? What did they do wrong? What are challenges that they had? Um, the stories themselves are, are amazing, but then the, the nuggets that you take away are really important and make notes and go back and revisit that. And uh, um, so I, I think one of the things that we definitely can do today with technology is get exposure to those kind of things very economically, if not for free. And we've all got, you know, time in the car when we're, you know, just staring at the windshield. That's a great time to start absorbing that information. And that'll that'll change your perspective. It'll change your um, your mind. And then when you have ideas, make sure your uh, you know your leadership at the company, other employees, make sure they hear it. Um, they might not act on it right away. That doesn't mean they thought your idea was bad. It just could be they've got a lot of things going on. But business leaders with you know big companies or small companies, they they definitely recognize people that have ideas and put them forward. And even if it doesn't get implemented, stay the course, keep making recommendations and, uh, you know, give your opinion on where you think things can get better. Thanks, Jim. Jake, anything you want to add to that? Oh, sure. And, and first of all, Jim, fully agree. Read, 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 read. There's so much good information out there. Um, and uh, I'm a big audiobook fan as well. And uh, you can you can really um, and even podcasts and everything for free or for a few bucks a month, you can get a lot of good content. Um, the, Alex, the one thing I was thinking about is um, the order of how we think of things. And, um, you know, uh, I think Brad uh, mentioned how important it was to really understand the value and purpose of a company. And, you know, it's, it's something I truly believe in that if you focus on first on the value and purpose that you're bringing, you know, you're creating something valuable for a society, whatever it may be, um, product or service. And when you create that value, you get rewarded with revenue. And if you keep your company healthy, that revenue is profitable and you get to invest to do more of and create more of the value that uh, um, that you originally created there. And I know that it sounds incredibly simplistic, but um, many times we get um, we get that turned around. And if you can focus um, first on the value and purpose, the problems and the struggles that you have, I find that that um, really helps you come to a solution, um, um, a good solution more quickly. Perfect. Thank you all. Um, I was hoping we would have time for one more question, but we are just out of time. So that is all we have today, everyone. Thank you all so much for all three of you for joining us, even though I know y'all have a busy week ahead of you. But um, I, I think I've learned something today and I hope everyone else in our audience has as well. Um, for our lovely audience, if you liked this topic, make sure to tune in next week uh, when Mark Zinkowitz, my coworker, is going to talk about how to form better business relationships and how to kind of maybe network outside of the office. It should be really fun and really um, just fun to listen to and good to learn about some different networking skills you can take to your next conference. Until then, I'll um, see you all then. Have a nice day, everyone.